two of my children, my youngest, are actually being homeschooled currently by me. Uh, I have one child that's in high school. Um, with my background, being an outsider, I've had several uh, opportunities to also going up in public school to the Department of Defense. And my family was in the military. Uh, I was also in the military. Uh, I have different trades that I have in my background uh, as far as heavy machinery, uh, heavy diesels, marine diesels. Um, I also had the opportunity to teach the Navy on uh, to operate that machinery. So the different levels of education to me is very important, whether you're a child or an adult. Um, with this education and being the outsider, it will work in your favor to make sure the student's achievements are a priority for your children. So thank you for the opportunity. to run for the school board because my kids have been in this district um, for 13 years and it feels like a good way to give back to my community and to serve and I'm just so excited uh, for the school that we have and I'm thankful and I would like to see the great place continue. Thank you, Sarah. I'm Scott Leonard. Um, my answer is relatively simple. It's just a good opportunity for for me and my family to, to serve the community that we're part of. Um, I'm a product of the school system and, and the community and um, just want to see this place be successful for many years to come. So, Alright, I'm speaking for Jesse Hubert and uh, this was his answer he sent me. I would like to have an active role in the quality of education my child uh, it's offered be, uh, reaching beyond that of the expected parent responsibilities. I believe our children should be provided the highest quality of education by the most qualified educators in the safest educational environment possible within our public, uh, with, within our budget restraints. Thank you. Totally geared around 
parenting-oriented decision-making. And being a member of the multi-positive board, I think that's important. And then most importantly, I'm a lifelong learner. Uh, I think being open-minded and open to new ideas and different ideas, different from my own, is very important.
know me. And uh, I feel like that's an easy answer. Uh, but beyond that, uh, keeping your rolling up, budgeting, uh, there's a lot of uh, big budget items coming up uh, that was recently brought to my attention. And uh, just uh, how, the, how the school is an integral part of the small rural community, I think uh, there's just many, many faucets of the community that impact the school and the school impacts it in turn and I just think more collaboration and, and stuff like that can be done. And then uh, lastly, drug abuse. Thank you. What do I think the greatest challenge facing the school district? Uh, obviously, there's a circumstance that's going on right now with our, our, our government. Um, as far as how they are, how they're taking things as far as the brand and our education system, how they're slowly tearing things apart within that. Um, it's the lowest part. It's where our kids go to school. Um, we are, we're, we're looking at teachers that hopefully teach them in the right direction. For when they do grow up and get into to, to the atmosphere that we're looking at getting into with government and things like that and moving on as far as becoming lawyers and the teachers themselves, it's important that we're teaching them the right way as far as their education, finances. Of course, there are big ticket items coming up. Um, some of those items we discussed the last uh, board meeting, um, and this one that they're looking at right now is possibly the gym. That just doesn't just happen with the board meeting. That happens with you guys, parents, and those in the community. So it's, it's a bigger aspect. So what I, what I think is that is the lack that is the parents and the students themselves getting involved. Taking this for instance, we have a lot of students that are looking to do the things in government. And moving forward with that, that's what we need to start, is what our children. So being that said, I think the children's education is where it is, is, needs to be improved as far as within our school district. Thank you. I think one of the biggest um, things in a small town in rural America is inconsistent enrollment. Um, some years we have a really big class, other years we have small classes. Um, I know specifically in the elementary school that kind of transitions into a fruit basket upset to try to move teachers around to cover classes. Um, there are several classes in our elementary that are quite large. I think that's a challenge um, for those teachers to have a touch on every student to know where they're at. Um, early education um, in our students' lives is very important. So I think that's a challenge um, that needs to be looked at. Um, I do believe as I look around our school, both upper and lower, that we have some teachers who are probably going to be exiting um, soon. Um, there's retirement on the horizon and I think the biggest challenge there is finding people that want to invest in Hillsboro, not only in our students but in our community and really want to, um, I think our challenge will be to attract quality educators that want to stay and be here for the long term because that's, that's who we're looking at losing in these next several years.
2A school right now, and we're on the verge of being a 3A school. So we're just on that verge, and obviously that messes with funding, and that also gives us a bit of a difference of what we can and can't do within our school district. So attracting people to Hillsborough, attracting uh, you know, business owners, leaders into our community, I think is one of the things that uh, we can work with throughout the community to bring in new people, to bring in families that can bring in uh, those students. Hillsboro used to be a lot larger in a lot of ways, but then it's shrunk down into where it is now. And so making sure that we can uh, have the quality educators that, you know, as I stated, they do have some that are on the verge of being you know, retired. We had a lot of retirements last year. And I know personally through uh, education that COVID has messed with a lot of people as far as their ideas and what they want in the future. So making sure our teachers feel safe, making sure our students feel safe, but uh, I think as we move on, it's facing those challenges. You know, as, as we invite people in, we can, uh, they can help with our budget. But that would be issues as a state. Um, and so my thing would be is that, you know, as far as personally, one of the things that I would always try to make sure is that we are reaching out to whatever forms, to whatever degrees to, to bring in those educators that can help, that can help us to grow, that can, you know, also help us to uh, teach our children and teach them well. Thank you.
make sure that the parents are deciding what education is being taught in their schools. Um, it's the parents' decision on whether the child should or shouldn't have to wear a mask or be vaccinated. It's a very important issue, and it's, it's really tearing this country apart right now. And in a small community like this, you can see that it, it, it allows people to stand together as a whole and, and look at the overall aspects of where it comes for our children. That's what's important. And seeing the, the children seeing us work together as individuals, it makes them work together as students in class. So that's where I stand on that issue. Thank you. I don't believe as a board member that my personal decision for myself or my family can apply to a whole school district. Um, I think the board needs to look at how policies play out for students and staff and those that are in the school building. I believe that you look at research that's being done or you look at what's being recommended <clears throat> for those specific organizations. And I think that my personal viewpoints um, are apply to my family, but there's no way that those can apply to an entire district of people that we're trying to educate and also move into a healthy way. I think the key to handling a sensitive issue like COVID or really any sensitive issue like that is, is listening. Um, listening to parents, listening to teachers, listening to the people we put in place that we consider um, to be experts. Um, and once we gather all that information, you know, then we can go forward with decisions. But I think, again, the key uh, in its simplest form, we need to start with listening. Speaking for Jesse Hubert again, I'm sure that everybody answering this question has already dealt with or is currently dealing with uh, this topic, um, be it within their close or extended family or at work or social circles. The ability to separate one's personal belief structure in relation to topics that are personal is a tall task to ask of anyone. I will always listen to the information available. I will ask questions of experts and not just swallow what I'm told without fully understanding it. In the end, I will attempt to make my decisions based upon knowledge over emotion or personal beliefs. Whenever uh, a decision is made, it obviously is not going to uh, win everybody over. There's always going to be discretion throughout anything that we do, and people are always going uh, to question things. My thoughts when it deals with uh, things of sensitive issue or politically charged topics is always look for, um, think about it, and then look for the, the proper channels, listening to people, uh, moving on, and also uh, addressing things, um, looking at the, the data that we have. But if we look in communities, like for example, um, I'm currently in Wichita, and we have a mass community. Do I enjoy it? No, I don't enjoy it one bit. But it's something that Wichita is put in force. Um, then when we look at these smaller communities, a lot of them don't have the same issues that a bigger community has. So I think it's always important making sure that we can keep it localized, that we can keep those decisions based upon what we have here and not what uh, someone else is doing in a different community. Whether that be that we start the year out and give choices to people, or uh, start it out and just leave it open to whatever is uh, going on. But we always are, I think it's always best to look at what we have here going on within our school, talking with people, talking with parents, talking with teachers, and uh, talking with students also, because they have a voice in the matter since they're the ones that are affected too, and, um, and going moving forward from that point. Again, the board member, I would invite people to come to the board meeting and talk to us about on their concerns and not just, uh, you know, stand on the sideline and do things, but to actually talk to us and, and address those things. That way we can get a good I'm going to echo several of the other candidates and say that um, being available to listen and to really hear what people are saying, um, 
understanding where they're coming from um, is part of the job of being a board member. Um, I think it is. I think it's just about most important that people feel valued, and that when they do come to a board member, um, they feel they feel like they're being heard. Um, it's not my job to make a, a personal decision. It's my job to work with the group, um, to look at the evidence that we have, to look um, at all of the information coming in, and to make the best decision that we can for um, the whole community, for our schools and our students. Um, it is the students, ultimately, and the, and the teachers who um, end up having to put this in place. Um, so I think it's it's just very important that everybody feels like they have the opportunity to share, um, but also recognizing that the board is doing the best job that they can with the information and and the decision making.
you develop an open door policy within the board, letting your uh, letting people know that you're approachable, but also uh, taking the time to maybe visit the school and talk with people to alleviate. Sometimes if you can get the staff members before a uh, problem, then uh, it can alleviate any uh, people getting irate or really upset or getting about a thousand emails in one night. Also, uh, with, with parents and being out there, You know, it's hard to say without really knowing some of the information that um, 
the administrators have where we need to improve. I'm sure there are areas, um, but I think that's something that, you know, once the new board is, in, uh, is installed, that's something we'll need to take a look at. I think, you know, striving for excellence on everything we do is important. And we've been excellent in a lot of things for a lot of years. Um, but that doesn't mean we can't be um, excellent in other areas as well. Thank you. From Jesse Hebrew, on a professional level, I've always enjoyed working with the administration and educational staff at USD 410. I see a desire to bring the best out of everyone involved within our school system, and I'd like to build upon that. Uh, that's a 
fantastic one to the school district. Uh, as far as uh, anything that I would like to see change, uh, I would like to see more vocational opportunities or college alternate um, programs for, for young people coming to Hillsboro. Uh, I've had kids out working for me that didn't know the difference between a ball peen hammer and a claw hammer. And something as simple as that is very important as I know I've never met a man that had, had, had a, a, all a perfectly good type of ball for the while. So use the appropriate tools and have an opportunity for these young people to learn those things and be able to have that thing. Thank you.
Uh, yes, I've spent some time within the structures that make up the USB 410, and I think we have nice facilities. I feel that the dollar um, has been stretched to achieve the best bang for the buck. I would support the idea of having of a bond to add AC to the gym. I've had the pleasure of being in our gym many times this year, and I must say it lacks comfort. <laughs>
as far as that's what was being stated at the last meeting. The facilities is important. They should be up yet because our children are there. There's are safety issues. One of the things that they spoke about was the, the air systems in the schools and how they how they function and what they're doing for our children. I mean, I grew up in a, a school system where it was no air conditioning, especially in the gym. But under the circumstances of what we're dealing with, yeah, it's needed. Because one of the things I hear from my son since he started at this school is that can we when are they ever going to put an air conditioning unit in the gym? And he still complains about it. But when it comes to a bond, it not just affects the school board, but it affects the people living in the community. You know, we see as a small community that come together to, to take care of a lot of things, volunteers and stuff like that. But when you're dealing with a bigger issue, you have to deal with contractors. You have to deal with increased taxes. I would support the bond, but I also have to look at other people's lives and how it would affect them. Some people may not be able to afford tax increases because of their income and the jobs they may have lost previously. So it's a big issue. Thank you. I too would echo, I think we have great facilities. I think we've done well to maintain what's been here quite a long time. We've stewarded that well. Um, but moving into the future, I do think that there's always maintenance. There's always a way to steward well, but also to look to grow and improve. But at this point, I'm not going to comment on bond issue. I've not been on the board. I haven't looked at their budget extensively and looked at what that would do to our community. Um, so I would need the opportunity to do more learning before I make a decision on that. Um, you know, when we come to various games and events, we get to see the pretty parts uh, of facilities. We don't uh, necessarily always see the parts that are tired and need attention. Um, AC in the gym, that would be amazing. Uh, been many a, a beat of sweat, roll off parents' brows in there, especially in the summertime. Um, but you know, bond issue, what all that entails, obviously that's something that we would need to, to weigh the pros and cons and make sure the juice is worth the squeeze. Um, we have to be responsible with taxpayer dollars. Um, and we also need to make sure that we're uh, maintaining a budget that is reasonable. Um, so I think that's something we'd have to get in, in the situation and just evaluate things once we're there.
um, going to some kind of a post-secondary education, whether that's trade school or college, or maybe they're even going straight into the workforce. Um, I was a little surprised at the, the um, difference in the effectiveness rate versus the um, graduation rate. We have a phenomenal program at Hillsborough High School, and we graduate a lot of students. Um, but when we look at how well that that's preparing them for life after high school, I think that there are some things that we could maybe do a little bit better. Um, our success rate was, oh, sorry, I lost my notes here. Um, Um, I recognize that there could be a variety of uh, variables that contribute to uh, these numbers, but I do think that it's important that we look at all aspects of learning from preschool all the way through uh, grade 12 and evaluate how our instruction and how our supports are aligning with these numbers. Um, we should ask ourselves, if, you know, are we being intentional about providing rigorous education? I'm identifying students' strengths and their weaknesses, and working to support each student in those areas. Are there holes in our instruction at any level um, that could be improved upon to build our students' skill sets and better prepare them for life after high school? Um, whether that's vocational readiness or even just social emotional readiness. Graduating from high school and going into the world is a really big deal. Um, and I think that we need to be intentional about looking at that. I would like to see our district be as transparent as possible when communi communicating with our community about the things that are going well, but also about some areas that could be improved upon. Um, I would love to see more collaboration between community members and our students um, as a way to just provide some of those meaningful experiences specifically within our businesses or our trades, um, that would just get the students some exposure and give them an opportunity to see what's out there and better prepare them for that life after college, help them work towards those goals that they have.
Some may just want to get out of high school and be done. But we also need to look at it all on a broad scale. And I think vocational skills and having to learn and having to get a, a small degree within the high school level, we have that aspect around us. We have several colleges in this area. We have vocational schools that are right here in this town that are starting. And I think if we apply those in our education system, I think not only will we achieve that and look at our children in a higher standard, but it gives them more of an opportunity to succeed. Excuse me, to succeed. Thank you. I have three students in the district currently, and they all are different learners, and they all have different abilities to learn. And we have been, as parents, pleased at the communication between the teachers and the parents to help them be as successful as they can be, no matter what level they're at. So I currently don't have any concerns. I would like us to see continuing to strive for excellence. Um, I do believe, correct me, Mr. Corby, that our middle and high school scores went up last year, even in the midst of hybrid learning. Like, that's pretty phenomenal, if you ask me. Um, I'm currently not aware of any concerns um, as far as achievement academically. Um, you know, I'm very satisfied with um, my two daughters that are in elementary school and their achievement, where they've been able to score and test and um, standardized measurements. Um, but, you know, that doesn't mean that that's the case for all parents and all students. If, if there are issues out there and parents or staff or uh, administrators think there's areas where we need to do better or we can do better, by all means, I think we need to to look at those seriously and, and find ways to improve. Um, but specifically, I, I wouldn't be able to speak to that. Thank you. For Jesse Hebert, basically he says, uh, at this point, based on the information available, he doesn't have any concerns. He feels like we are doing well.
the school have a better hand and real world, world readiness for these kids. Uh, I think every graduate coming out of high school should have a really good understanding of finance, money, and work ethic. Uh, in my own reflection of my school, uh, coming through high school, they didn't teach me one thing about finance. The real world taught me that, and I think that's a jump start that we can give these kids. Uh, something else would be, uh, I'd like to see uh, school-sponsored sporting opportunities at a younger age and these kids, uh, and not so much relying on the rec uh, for doing that. Uh, I think in doing that, these kids might uh, learn technique a lot better and take things to be more serious, uh, and that way they'd be better in the high school area. Uh, also, I'd like to see greater emphasis on the FFA and related activities. Thank you. Having no budgetary uh, restrictions, as far as I think every all school districts are like that. I think when we look at our, all our government entities, we always see that the school districts are the last ones to, to receive any type of funding. They're the low, the low man on the totem pole, and it, it affects our, our children. Of course, if there was no, if, if there was a broad range of finances that we would have, I, I would look at you know a pay increase absolutely for our teachers and our, our faculty. Uh, faculty upgrades. Obviously, there's there's a lot to do for this facility to make it safe for our children. But I also look at the educational programs. I agree with the fact that there should be other programs besides sports entities that we have for other children who wish to participate. Different clubs, uh, different uh, educational programs, learning programs, as far as trades. Again, I'm very adamant about that. Um, but it would be awesome to have that because there's a lot of different things that we could do for our schools, for our teachers and our faculty. Thank you.
credit to where they can go out into the public right afterwards without any debt and any education and be able to get a job with a degree already and expand upon that. Thank you.
And two, want to tell you guys thank you for putting this on. I think the fact that um, as high schoolers that you guys saw this as an area where you wanted to learn more and you were passionate about this topic um, is a really cool thing. That's not something that a lot of high schoolers, uh, a lot of students at your age do. Um, and I know it wasn't something that I got to do when I was your age. And so I just think it's really neat that you guys took the time to, to research this process and, and get to learn firsthand how it works. So thank you for that. Um, being an alumni of USD 410, um, having taught in the county, choosing the district to raise my kids in, I, I do have a vested interest in seeing this district be all that it can be. Um, I've seen firsthand some of the struggles that the district has faced, but also things that the district has overcome. And I feel really good about it. Um, I'm a person that likes to ask a lot of questions and to really understand processes and how things work. And I think that um, not only will being on the board provide me that opportunity to see education from a different perspective, but um, I also feel like I can bring a unique perspective to the table. And it would be my pleasure and privilege to serve this district in that capacity and to, to be able to continue advocating for our students, our staff, and our community. Thank you.